greenhouses and two very different gardens. One is a twin wall polycarbonate design and the other is a classic glass house. It took a team of two guys a day to put up each of the houses, but of course we had the foundation in place when they started their work. You can see from this time-lapse photography how quickly assembly can be done with two experienced builders. I asked greenhouse expert Andrew Cook, who's used these structures since his youth in the Netherlands, what Americans need to know about greenhouses. How would one gauge what size greenhouse they should have? That really is, there is no rule. Initially it starts off with, I have so many plants that are sort of summer outdoor plants that in the winter need protection. You start storing your outdoor plants in the winter, you start growing in the greenhouse as well. And that part of it then is up to the imagination. These are some of my babies that I carry over from year to year, like my citrus trees and things like that. See, that's the way to do it. And yeah. Let's keep them inside. That's what we do with them. Absolutely. What about just, um, I guess I'm always concerned about uh, breaking the glass of a greenhouse uh, or it being damaged in, in um, you know, a hailstorm or something like that. Yeah, we, even on a glass greenhouse these days you have good safety glass. But the polycarbonate is a better material. It is stronger. That is, is particularly also with the curvature of the roof, uh, no shoulder, so we have a, a, a more unique shape. But that shape allows the wind to blow over and the hill bounces off, uh, right. ricochets off the shape of the roof. And because of all this twin wall polycarbonate, it is somewhat flexible. Are there certain things one should keep in mind in siding a greenhouse on your property? Oh, absolutely. Um, in a hobby greenhouse, generally, some protection is required, and a, a natural fence, barriers, tree lines, things like that. Here we have the garage, yeah. we have a hedge and, a f and fencing around Absolutely. this particular area. This is very, very good. We recommend to have it somewhere near the side of a house or something like that. Uh, if you have it freestanding, you're going to need to do some extra. You need to make sure that it's well anchored into the ground. In this case, we've used concrete block. Correct. Now, Andrew, obviously, in a greenhouse of any size, ventilation is important. Yeah, it's very important, particularly in the United States where the climate is much warmer. And traditionally, the greenhouse concept is an English, Northern European concept. And uh, many of those greenhouses actually are not well enough ventilated for the United States. Yeah. Uh, we get cold here, yeah. but we get easily very warm it in the daytime. It can get very warm <laughs> here in the early spring. Uh, correct, yeah. exactly. So in a greenhouse like this, the big important thing is a, is a through draft. When heating a greenhouse like this, a, a hobbyist greenhouse, what are the things you should consider? Oh, first of all, size. Uh, how big is it? How much do you want to heat it up? The second thing is, what is the temperature that is desired? Usually, the desired temperature is about 52 degrees for general plants. Yeah. Orchids really need about 62 degrees. Yeah, bump it up a yeah, little bit. Bump orchids. it up a little bit. Yeah. So, it depends on that. So, the BTUs, which is what a greenhouse heater is generally expressed in, could use anywhere from maybe 10,000 to 20,000 BTUs for a small one. Well, I feel like I'm prepared for that coldest night in January now. Yes, you are. Well, thank you so much. Oh, Welcome. Now putting your greenhouse to work.